Hello, and welcome to Laudio's four-part webcast series, Self-Care for Healthcare. My name, again, is Tom Hills, and I'm a senior executive with Laudio, and I'm happy to have Leanne Tiemann with me again today. Leanne is a nationally acclaimed professional speaker, author, and nurse who was accidentally caught up in the Vietnam orphan airlift in 1975. After her Operation Babylift story was featured in Chicken Soup for the Mother's Soul, Leanne became one of Chicken Soup's most prolific writers. Her devotion to more than 30 years of nursing made her the ideal co-author of the New York Times bestseller, Chicken Soup for the Nurse's Soul. Her latest book, Self-Care for Healthcare, Your Guide to Physical, Mental, and Spiritual Health, provides the backdrop and content for this webcast series. Welcome again, Leanne. We're so glad to have you with us today. I'm so glad to be back. Thanks. During our last two sessions, we've discussed the importance of starting a self-care program and have started um, and have begun talking about the need to focus on our bodies first and our minds next. In our third session, we'll be talking about spirit. And we know this can be an uncomfortable discussion for some and an easier one for others. Leanne, how does spirituality play a part in a robust self-care program? I think we are um, people who have minds, bodies, and spirits, and though they are all integrated. And to ignore one and, and, and not the other, or to care for one and not the other, does not make us whole. And in order to, to give her that holistic care that we're called to give, we have to be strong of mind, body, and spirit. And it's interesting, Tom, I think it is kind of a topic that people sort of avoid because everybody comes from a very different place that way. And yet it's, it's key. After I give my presentation, people come up to me and whisper two things. And I know just what they're going to say. Interestingly, thank you for talking about forgiveness as we discussed in our last series. And the next one is thank you for talking about spirituality. People are craving this today. Actually, I, I got the research that showed that during the pandemic, the number two in the month of March, I believe, was it April? The second most Googled word was prayer. And in some parts of the country, online church participation went up 80%. Because I think it's so important that we be in touch with whatever supreme being, whatever creator, whatever spirit, universe, God you believe in, that we have to be in touch with that every day and turn some of this burden over so we don't have to bear it all by ourselves. Statistics show that about 93% of Americans believe in God. And so I always sort of address my audiences based on that assumption. And to those of them, the 93%, I say, you need to be in touch with that divine being every day, even if it's 15 minutes. And they go, well, how am I supposed to find time for that, for heaven's sake? She already told me I have to walk several times a day and I have to stop and eat and I have to go to bed earlier. So how am I supposed to come a time for this? But what I absolutely know is that is the foundation of who we are and what we do. And, and the suggestion I have is one that I started. I realized it was lacking in my own life. So I bought myself a little daily reading, inspiration, devotional type of book. And, but being the task-oriented nurse that I am, I couldn't sit down and read it, of course not, but I could read it every day while I dried my hair. So with the hair dryer blowing, I would read it out loud. And then a couple of weeks into this, it occurred to me, you know what, Leanne, I think you're supposed to sit down. <laughs> Shut up and listen. Just listen to that deep inner voice that, um, that you can call it higher conscience, you can call it um, Holy Spirit, whatever you believe in. But that's where we get the guidance in our lives. And I think we need to just discipline ourselves to take 15 minutes a day to just to connect with that supreme being, with that power. Um, one day I was talking to someone I so admired and he was telling me how he had worked in his garden all morning and then he went to visit the prisoners in the jail. And then he came back and we did five hours of work in his office. And then he went to the homeless shelter and I said, Bob, how do you have time to do that? And he said, well, I start every day. No, no, no. And the whole thing, he said, and I pray an hour every morning. And I said, I can't even fit in 15 minutes. How, how, can, you, how can you take an hour of prayer every morning? And he said, if I didn't start my day that way, 
I could never accomplish the rest. And I have found in my own life that time is the best investment. I, everybody tells me too, they come back from that 15 minutes even, just more renewed, more focused, more productive. So it's a, it's a good investment of our time. Thanks so much. For our last and final segment of this four part series, we'll be focusing on time, taking the time to practice these disciplines regularly. So we hope you join us and thanks again for your comments today, Leanne. So My joy, thank you. <laughs>